Okay, so uh, next lightning talk is Poocher. How to recommend dog breeds using deep learning by Aaron Weagle. All I know about this presentation is there's a lot of dogs, apparently, so I'm sure it's going to be really exciting. Let's give a round of applause to Aaron. All right, happy Singles Awareness Day, everyone. <laughs> All right, so I'm Aaron Weagle, and I actually work as a data scientist at a biotech company doing nothing with deep learning or dogs, but this is like a side project that I started at a data science boot camp called Metis, which there's a couple of alumni in the audience. So, um, and since I've worked on it and improved it since then, this is actually a third version, which I like to refer to as the return of the dog eye. So anyway, let's get started talking about this. So why did I think to do this? So. Uh, dog breeds have widely varying temperaments, but people usually get dogs based off their appearance. Like, oh, that dog's cute, I should get it. Well, I had a bad situation that happened involving this where my housemate decided it was a great idea to get a husky. Because um, then if you know, huskies are hyper, howl a lot, need a lot of exercise, and do not tolerate being home. Which really didn't fit my housemate's lifestyle considering he's never home and the most exercise he gets is opening a bag of chips. So I thought, could we help people identify their ideal dog based both on appearance and temperament? Uh, so to do that, I thought to combine sort of text and images in a system I called dog to vec <laughs> So first, classify 114 different types of dog breed images and not dog images. Uh, average the final layer of that neural network to get dog breed image vectors. Um, generate word vectors using word embeddings uh, via glove, sort of combine those and find the cosine similarity of image and text vectors, and then finally recommend the three most similar dog breeds based off that user input. So uh, in order to get my data and use a model, I did transfer learning with ImageNet uh, and glove. So to get all the data for this transfer learning, uh, first web scrape descriptions of dog breeds from a dog breed website. Uh, used numerical features uh, and converted them to words and then back to vectors again. I'll get to that in a moment. Uh, I used web scrape dog images with Stanford Dogs, which is a, it's a data set which is filled with dog images, which is just fun to look at in general. Um, and then user uploaded images from previous versions to retrain. So the images that I used are about 20,000 dog images, 10,000 cat images, and 30,000 not dog images. That final class being especially important because my friends like to upload photos like this. <laughs> so uh, in order to classify the dog breeds in the images, uh, and whether they were dogs and then whether which breed they were, I used uh, stack image classifiers using mobile nets and Keras. So you can just uh, uh, initialize a mobile net in Keras and then it'll download the image net weights. So you can train it from there and it usually only takes a few hours, if that, on a GPU instance to train. So first, you take your dog image, or whatever it is, and you classify it into dog, cat, or not dog. Um, if a person in a war uploads an image of a cat or a not dog, they warn the user. And then it still recommends dog breeds anyway, because they're probably just having fun or something. So, And then from there, that sort of tells you which dogs to recommend. Um, so in terms of the actual image classifier, there's a good average accuracy, uh, especially for a fine grain classification problem like this. Uh, but there's worse accuracy for breeds with similar appearances. So the model can't really tell the difference between these two dogs, even though they're different breeds. So that's a Malamute and that's a Husky. Um, I don't really know either. So, um, And then on the left, these two right here, there's a Yorkshire Terrier and an Australian Terrier. And a lot of times it seemed to have to do with either size or something with their tails, which really wasn't obvious from all the images. So that was sort of a problem with just the image classifier in that sense. Um, in addition to the, uh, the thing about this, though, is that uh, we want to find similar breeds, not necessarily perfectly identify them. So if in the top three we happen to get the breed that might be that exact one, the person might not even know what breed it is anyway. So, um, <laughs> so I also use word vectors based off the user text input to sort of the, uh, to find how to like get the temperament or its different characteristics of the dog. And the thing about these is that they're great for analogies. The uh, most uh, Famous case being king is to man as queen is to woman, which both glove and word devec pick up on really well. But they're really bad for antonyms. And the reason being that they're trained on the context the word appears in. So for example, big and small often appear in the same context. So it thinks they're very similar, even though they have very different meanings when it comes to dogs. Because you know, a uh, Great Dane is a lot different than a Shih Tzu or a Chihuahua. So in order to get around this, for the different ratings for the dog, I assigned big to big dogs and apartment for small dogs based off of user input. So 
Because people generally refer to small dogs, they want something that can live in an apartment, like a tiny apartment in San Francisco. All right, so um, right here, this is sort of the web app that I built that if you want to ever check it out, the URL's up there. Make sure to all go there at once so it crashes. That would be great. <laughs> and keep in mind that uh, that was my extent of my front end experience, so it might not be that great. But in any case, if you ever want to see that the URL is there, um, this is just the URL again, and this is my info, and if you want to come talk to me about dogs later, I'd be happy to. 